Hi, I'm Kushan Mitra, contributing editor automotive at The Print, and I'm with Narayan Subramaniam, the CEO of Ultraviolet Automotive, which many people believe is the next big thing in the Indian EV space. But you've been around for nine years now. You set up in 2016, yes. along with your co-founder Neeraj. So why did you guys set up Ultraviolet? First question. So perhaps I'll take you into some background context as well. Mm -hmm. Neeraj and I go back a long way, classmates in school. Okay. Uh, we were competing for, you know, the top rank in school when we were in uh, through middle and high school. Went to the same university for engineering as well, mm -hmm. where we had a very strong um, interest in creative implementations of technology and started taking part in a lot of creative engineering competitions and ended up winning over 40, 50 competitions across India in about uh, four years of time. So that DNA of bringing together electronics, computers, mechanics, and creating marvelous outcomes was, I think, something that excited us. Mm -hmm. So post which, I think we went our separate uh, career paths. I got into automobile design at MID Ahmedabad. Okay. Did my second master's at Umeo in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Worked with Volkswagen in Germany, worked with Toyota in Japan with the work in the Hatsu Group. Mm -hmm. uh, Neeraj finally worked with Yahoo in the US, then went on to do his uh, B-School. Mm -hmm. um, Went, uh, went to work with NetApp, another software-based uh, company. And around 2014-15, we started thinking about what are the avenues where we could bring this culture of what we enjoyed, mm -hmm. of bringing together deep technology towards commercial outcomes. And both of us made our way back to Bangalore in 2015. Spent the first uh, eight months or so researching on, we were clear electric is you know, going to take off 2020 onwards. And we said if we were to invest four or five years of our, uh, our time into R&D. Where is it going to take us? And we, I think one fundamental difference that we arrived at vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the industry is that we should take a top-down approach. Okay. The rest of the industry has taken a bottom-up approach of entry-level scooters, a two kilowatt to three kilowatt to start with. Now the power band has moved up to five, five to six kilowatts. We were clear. Scooters, of course, is growing on electric vehicles, but some of the Southeast Asian countries have made tech commodity on scooters. A lot of plug-and-play approaches were also seen in India back in the day, right? Yeah. So, um, we didn't want to get into that. We wanted to build real technology where there is a moat in terms of R&D that we build around. Uh, so, that's why the higher-end motorcycle... To start with. Yes. So, other factors as well. Electric is a new way of life, right? It's not just a new product, it's a new way of life altogether. And automobiles to succeed first have to excite you. Mm -hmm. So which is why we went after the performance uh, segment, the sports segment with the F77 to start with. Mm -hmm. The other benefit of that was sports motorcycles have the highest challenges to solve in terms of thermal safety, battery management systems, vehicle control units. <laughs> Charging, discharging, you need to build charges capable of handling heat and Indian mm -hmm. terrain conditions to even charge the vehicle, not only about the battery discharging power, right? So, eight years of R&D went in um, before we launched the F77, but we solved a lot of the unknowns in the EV ecosystem. So, today we make our own battery packs, we make our own BMS, we make our own VCU. Today we've launched with the X47, the most power dense charger in the world that is air-cooled and is on a motorcycle. Yeah, the onboard charger, right? Yes, yes. So, vertical integration has been key focus for us. Thereby, of course, volumes have to be meaningful. We're scaling up. Uh, this this time last year, we were in one city. Now we're in 30 cities. Mm -hmm. uh, volumes are, I mean, going to grow. We're in Europe as well now. You've uh, been very successful in Europe. So, can you give us an idea? I believe you have talked to guys is saying that your containers are getting sold out even before right. they reach. Right. Because again, the European market wants performance products. They don't want commuter products Correct. necessarily. And so, the, yeah. The maturity of motorcycling in Europe is uh, quite ahead, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our uh, marquee companies, in fact, are from Europe and Japan. And mm -hmm. So, motorcycling is a strong part of culture there. Mm -hmm. People understand design, people understand uh, performance, people understand capability of a motorcycle. And I think the fact that we had built in all of this as a startup from India was quite surprising to a lot of people. So you've built a performance product, even today's product is a performance product, you know, 
610 Newton meters of torque, yes. which is immense, and you have a 145 kph top speed or under eight, just over eight seconds, zero to 100. So you, you've given a performance product. So you're building a performance product, not a commuter product. So you decided to go down the top. That's why motorcycles, that's- Yes. And motorcycles, motorcycles for all of us in India are, have a very strong emotional value as well, right? Mm -hmm. We aspire, right from when we were kids, we aspire to own that dream motorcycle at one point in our careers or life. So you, uh, is, it was a conscious decision to stay out of the commuter segment. Right? I mean, uh, until we have a competitive edge in that segment. So, for example, today you would launched a radar enabled, I would call ARAS, right? Rider yes, Assistance yes, System yes. Advanced. So, you know, so this is the first in, I don't, I don't know how many foreign uh, motorcycles have, international motorcycles have that. So, you're doing these things to distinguish yourself from the competition. So, these no, are. No, I think the, the radar was more for um, us augmenting safety on two wheels. Because, I mean, I was talking about one aspect, right? The motorcyclists designing motorcycles. Mm -hmm. So, we, in all of our um, experience riding different formats of motorcycles, there is a huge delta in safety on four wheels versus two wheels, mm -hmm. which is for, further compounded by a helmet. While it saves you in a crash, it also restricts your field of view. Mm -hmm. Right on a car, you've got the rear view mirror and two side view mirrors. Mm -hmm. Now, you also have other camera radar based systems that. Mm -hmm. augment that further right but the motorcycling world is way off mm -hmm. and you're right there are a few i think japanese or european brands that offer uh era systems but those come at 20 30 lakh price points right and it's out of the league for someone that can actually benefit from these systems the fact that we're bringing it at say what sub two and a half lakhs was a major must do for us in terms of if we say we are tech first tech cannot only mean performance how much can we push in terms of safety as well but and are your investors supporting you in saying that you are going to be a limited volume player for the time being because and go slow on growth i mean until now how many f77s about 2000 units you've sold totally it's been quite quite north of 2000 uh, mm -hmm. yeah across uh, um across india and then the international volumes mm -hmm. have started to pick up now. so and do you think the x47 will help you double growth or you make it even go fast because this is much more yes. it's not a sports crossover as you showed in a demonstration video, uh, you know, Indian roads. Uh, I mean, you're seeing it yes. in the news in Bangalore and yes. uh, Pune. So um, so this should help in sales. You think? I think it will, it will expand the segment multifold. Mm -hmm. uh, crossovers is cutting through streets to roadster segments to off-road mm -hmm. segments to various um, requirements that where motorcyclists want something that you spend 70% of time in urban riding and mm -hmm. the other 30% <coughs> more than capable of handling any demands that you uh, put the motorcycle through. Now, I mean, just looking at the motorcycle space, I mean, the 300cc plus, because you would be competing also with the likes of the BMW 310s and sure. going up to the KTM 390s as well. Do you see the buyer focused also on brand? And this is where building a brand is also important for you because so people are buying a brand. They're buying a BMW or a KTM because of a brand. They're not, correct, let's correct, be honest, you're not, you might not be buying a Dominar. Dominar sales are sort of stalled at a certain, it's not as powerful a brand as say KTM, which is also Bajaj. Sure. So do you think building a brand is also important for you? Extremely important. And I think more than us strategizing on to how to build a brand, what we've done is be very authentic. Mm -hmm. We've said right from 2016 mm -hmm. that we exist or we want to exist to build advanced technology mm -hmm. to have, make exciting machines and to be very design forward in terms of problem solving, not just the aesthetics of the motorcycle, but how many use cases problems can be solved mm -hmm. uh, for a rider. So we've over and over again stuck to the core of what we stand for. And I think we see people resonate with okay. that. And, and you'll be taking obviously solving problems, as you said, started top down. This is a bit more larger market than the F77 was yes. the X47 the larger market and maybe what you showcased last year with your Tesseract and Shockwave. Was it also by the way a conscious decision to today you showcase something that's going to be available? Yes. I mean the Tesseract people ask you still where it is right? Yeah because we unveiled it a year ahead of our <laughs> time. And I so think today that's why it said you're going on absolutely. book delivery yes, start yes. to October. Yes. And best of luck and Thank hope you. to see you next year at the next launch at the next event. Sure.
All right.